Hey everybody, welcome to 2020. I'm yeah. Yes, we made it. We made it. <laughs> yes, we did. Our ancestors are proud. They are proud. We are standing on their shoulders. And I am here with astrologer Sam Reynolds, who is going to help us understand what has been going on since the new moon started on December 26th. That's right. Um, and we're now approaching the full moon in Cancer on January 10th. Sam is going to give us a little bit of insight into what that means. And we're going to talk a little bit or a lot about abundance because everyone starts off the new year thinking about money. I know on all of my feeds, I'm seeing lots of stuff about abundance and money and wealth and riches and manifesting and all those things. And I love it. And we're going to talk about why, what the heck does that have to do with Capricorn? And then also some little treats and tools for the cycle. The first thing I want to say to people that I think is very important that I guess have, has become like my PSA of each season is that for the new moon, which was the, the 26th, and then for the one, the full moon that's coming up on the 10th, I, I do want to give people the caution that on those particular days, I would be careful about particular ritual work, you know, if they're trying to manifest, because they're eclipses. And I know the common idea is like, well, it's a new moon, it's a full moon, but it's like, a super, not literally a super full moon, but it is like a supercharged uh, full moon. And what we had was a new moon. It's like taking a butter knife and sticking it into an outlet and being like, I wanted to get electricity though. And that's not what the way to do it. So I would say it's, it's fine to kind of do it a day after, you know, give it some time to edge off, um, to kind of mellow with your intentions and ideas and what you want to manifest rather than being so like anxious that at the full moon, as it's happening, you know, you do your, your particular rituals. It's just a, it's, it's a very highly charged time. And on my website for this particular week, I have like five things that people can do um, as they're approaching or dealing with any eclipse. Mm. This particular set of eclipses, the one, the new moon from the 26th or 25th, depending on where you were in the country, and then the one that is coming up on the 10th. These e are the last set going toward the final set of full Cancer Capricorn eclipses. The next time we have a set of eclipses, we're going to have one with Sagittarius mm -hmm. um, and Gemini because the um, nodes would have moved. And then we're going to come back to a Cancer, I believe, eclipse. Um, but that'll be like the last one for like nine years or so um, until we start having those again. So what's really important about these eclipses is that they really highlight the planets that are in Capricorn, which are Saturn and Pluto. When we're talking about the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, we are talking about deep structure, deep reform, kind of willing to plunge to the depths in order to talk about how you are constructing power in your life. So it sounds like then there's three things we should be thinking about this cycle. The first is the eclipse. Yes. The second is this Saturn-Pluto conjunction. Yeah. And then all of us, regardless of what, where we are astrologically, whether we're a Scorpio or a Gemini or Pisces, but the sun is in Capricorn right now. So that's lighting up a part of yeah. all of us. Well, there's a lot of Capricorn happening, right? So yeah. there's Jupiter in Capricorn. There's... Saturn, Capricorn, Pluto, and Capricorn. We're going to have a sun, um, a solar. Well, we had a solar eclipse. Now we're going to have a lunar eclipse. So, and we also have the south node in Capricorn. So we have like all these, you know, Capricornian things. We're kind of, yeah, we're, ca we're capped with Capricorn. Capricorn is a sea goat. And it's not just a goat. And why I think that's significant is that we're talking about both a body or a creature of the sea and a creature of land. And we're talking about ultimately evolution. So Capricorn really is how we're dealing with the question and quality of our evolution. Wow, I've never heard that right? side of Capricorn before. So it's kind of how you progress and how you are progressing as an earth sign, um, how you're progressing in the physical world. And this goes into something that is also important to understand about Capricorn because it's a cardinal sign so it's dealing with the prime energy of the earth, which is sensual, which is also sexual and fecund. 
a lot of people don't realize that what's happening at the solstice is that the sun has appeared to die, right? And so that's because we have longer nights than we have days. Three days hence from that solstice, the sun begins to rise, which is where we celebrate um, Christmas, right? And we celebrate the resurrection of the sun. It's the end of Saturnalia. All those particular things have kind of come up. Now, why is that important? Because the sun is coming back. So you have like the sun, the power, the fecundity of the sun resurrecting coming up. So that goes into another word that's associated with Capricorn, dealing with abundance that most people don't recognize, which is cornucopia. Mm -hmm. Cornucopia, you know, where you have the horn of plenty, the horn right? Of plenty. Right? Is where we're talking about being in touch with that prime energy. So having that sense of vitality, that vital force, power, is really what is at the essence of Capricorn, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of like, how you're asserting your own personal power, how you're using your power in the world, how you're using your power in the dynamics with other people, all those things is how you kind of achieve that cornucopia. One of the things that we are up to this cycle is of course working with the abundance flower essence. That flower essence in this cycle for the folks that are on the new manifestations subscription program, we had this whole um, video that we talked about the blocks, the subconscious blocks to abundance. The flower essences offer us the opportunity to get underneath into those subconscious influences that may be affecting how we um, achieve in the outer world. People tie Capricorn to materialism, mm -hmm. you know, even relating it those are, for those who are into tarot, they will talk about the devil card as related to Capricorn. And I think some measure of that, but materialism is if you're, you're only thinking about, you know, material, right? You're not thinking about the spirit within the material, which again, it's why it's always important to think about not just Capricorn as the goat, but the sea goat. Hmm. I mean, of course, the material world is important because it is an earth sign. Right. And I remember last cycle when you were talking about, you know, the Sagittarius that dips its arrow into the heart and the soul and shoots it out into the world. And then, I, and I love this metaphor, I keep coming back to it. And Capricorn, like catching that diamond, it's how we are crystallizing. And like, again, like you said, the structure of our intentions, that it's not just something that's whimsical and goes off into the air, but that there's, that we're catching it and we're making something concrete out Absolutely. of what it is that we desire. That is the plan. That is the way to conceptualize it. And then, you know, and then it's no coincidence that we have the New Year's and people writing their New Year's resolutions. And it's not just this like, well, I want this on, I want that. It's like, well, how, like, what is the action plan? What are the smart action steps to get the results that I want? Right. What are you, what are you willing to pass through? I mean, it's no accident that this month is January, right? And we're talking mm -hmm. about January in commemoration of the god Janus, right? And Janus was the goddess of doorways and also the dual face god, right? So it's kind of like the coming and going, right? So again, going back to this eclipse, I often describe cancer as your origins, you know, in terms of where you're starting from, you know, your people, family, you know, the humbles begin your humble beginnings. And then Capricorn is more like your destination and destiny, mm -hmm. right? Where you want to go kind of what's taking you up, you know, as we're contemplating the dynamic between our origins and then going toward our destiny. It's, it's good to be aware of both, knowing where you've come from, how you've, you've constructed that, because the wisdom of the ancients and even like what we've seen in other aspects of literature is that the beginning is in the end and the end is in the beginning. Absolutely. So kind of understanding a little more about your beginning is a way to understand a little more about your end. And it's so, again, like every time we have these conversations, there's like a new insight or connection between these indigenous systems because we are from the Chinese medicine perspective in the season of the water element. Water is what we pour for libation. It's how we connect the world. It's how we connect between right now and the shoulders that we stand on. And then also um, in Chinese medicine, the spirit animal of the water element is a two-headed deer. Oh, and wow. one head is looking forward and one head is looking backward. Wow. Very much the same principle as the Sankofa bird. You know, the bird that flies forward while looking behind us. So it's this 
across systems, this idea of like, where do I come from? And how does that influence where I'm going? How are those two worlds reflecting on one another? Because, you know, as you move up in your career and your esteem, it's like the first thing you fa- don't make your family, you know, make your family proud, you know, right. these ideas. It's like the home and my individuation are intimately connected. And we kind of see that in the Capricorn Cancer polarity. So when we're talking about abundance, we have to look at, you know, the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. And this, I think, is the best metaphor for understanding our mind because we have the top of the iceberg, which is like the 10% of the brain that we can know and access. And that's usually where we set our intentions. That's where it's like, you know, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z in 2020, or I'm going to do this by the end of the year. I'm going to drink 70 milliliters of water a day, whatever it is that we say, that's my thing. I'm going to drink two liters of water every morning. So that's the the conscious mind and the intentions, but underneath the water is this whole realm of psychic material that is running the show. So I've identified four blocks to abundance that I'd love us to look at and that those of us who are working with the program are exploring in more detail this season. The first block to to abundance is feeling disconnected from our purpose. And so the first philosophy that we're, that we're going by is that, you know, and it's related to that Sagittarius and the flame and the desires of the heart. It's this idea that the universe wants us to be successful. And so when we are really living on purpose, when we are using the gifts and the talents that we are born with and given to their fullest potential, the universe is going to flood us with abundance to keep doing more of that. And it's this idea that we are all interconnected in the world. And so when I am living my actual purpose, not only my life gets better, but the world gets better. It is enriched in some way. And that we are all threads within the same spider web. The second block that we look at is a lack mentality. And that's basically the idea of I don't have enough, but there is not enough. And I often use this picture um, that you see here of this person that's connected to this stream of ancestry because more and more what I'm finding is that our lack mentality is something that is passed down. You know, so it's an invitation for us to look at what do we learn from our parents, from our grandparents, from their parents around economic wealth and abundance. Did we grow up with the ideas around there not being enough? And I think particularly in this country with the Ma'afa or the slave trade, um, that both sides of the equation are affected economically in terms of our relationship with abundance. We can explore where are the places where I'm saying I don't have enough time, where are the places I'm saying I don't have enough money, where are the places I'm saying that I don't have enough love, And can I create a new reality that negates that false belief of lack? The next block to abundance is deficient personal esteem. So whereas lack mentality says there there is not enough, this block is that I am not enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not brilliant enough, I'm not capable, um, I'm too overwhelmed, I don't have enough resources, inner or outer resources, which the water element in Chinese medicine governs, But this idea of how can I stand in the value of who I am and what I offer to the world. And again, we can look at a direct lineage. If you come from a people who were um, exploited for labor, then your access to knowing that you deserve the fruits of that labor um, in their fullest may may be challenged or disrupted. The last block is, of course, procrastination. And procrastination includes being distracted, includes, you know, you have a brilliant idea, but instead of executing, you're looking at social media or you get wrapped up in whatever's going on in your family or whatever it is that gets in the way of you being able to activate and move on the brilliance that would bring you more abundance in your life. So those are the four blocks that we're going to really be getting underneath this cycle and looking at what is standing in my way internally, you know, what are the limiting beliefs that I've accepted or internalized 
that are blocking me from tuning into, as they say, the abundance is not something to acquire, it's something to tune into, but what's keeping me from tuning in? And that's what we're gonna be digging open this cycle. What I, I like about the four blocks that, you know, you mentioned, um, you know, the idea of disconnect, the lack mentality, deficient, deficiency esteem, and then also procrastination, especially when one's dealing with distraction. That all relates to the primal energy of Capricorn, particularly, you know, being disconnected from your purpose, right? I mean, that's kind of what, you know, when we have Christmas, you know, when we're talking about Capricorn season, and I am talking more, I guess, to Westerners and those who celebrate Christmas, but the general idea of the season, going into the season, coming from Sagittarius into Capricorn, is to kind of come back with a renewed sense of purpose, a renewed sense of light, right? And the ascendancy of light, the light is coming back. And by virtue of the, la the light coming back, that's kind of the antithesis to the lack mentality that we're dealing with. And if you're aligned with purpose, then you don't have to kind of fret as much about procrastination. And your sense of esteem isn't so much tied up just in terms of what you don't have, but what you're doing and what you do have. And who you are. And who you are. And so, I mean, that's kind of like where you're hooked in through the power of Capricorn. And it's so true. I mean, like I have found myself procrastinating um, often with different things. But I think what I've, I've clarified, and especially, and it's interesting, just in the last month, I think what has come up is like where I have felt this detachment from a sense of purpose or what I enjoy. I think that's also important important because when you're attached to your sense of purpose and your sense of purpose i mean ultimately should usually does give you a sense of joy you want to do it you don't exactly. want to you don't want to delay with it there's you, fire there's there's some i would say like some of that sagittarian passion of fire yeah. it's, it's alive you get up and you want to get to it so but when you don't it's kind of like oh this again Capricorn being governed by Saturn and that sense of like, you know, I think the fault or, you know, one of the things with that people often talk about with Saturn is, is like responsibility and the mundane. Mm -hmm. And so it's, we're like kind of re contextualizing that because if the passion is there, then it's like the spirit that lies in matter. It's the magic that's within the mundane there is like a connection to this greater purpose that's driving us. Saturn can lift you up. You know, people always think of Saturn as weighing you down, but Saturn points out what's weighing you down so you can rise up. One of the things that we're gonna be doing this cycle is, as it relates to procrastination, is a little worksheet that I developed to help us get a better sense of what are the things that we are passionate about and what are the things that are dragging us down, causing us to procrastinate, making us have that like, oh my God, I have to do X, Y, and Z, and seeing where we can delegate or automate those things. Right. So we're going to use our Capricornian skills of management to manage our lives and to be the CEOs and CFOs of our lives and to start to outsource the things that disconnect us from our sense of purpose and that light and that flame that drives us. So if you'd like to set up a astrology session with Sam, maybe get some insight into what 2020 holds for you, please definitely reach out to him on unlockastrology.com. There it is. <laughs> and if you'd like to work with me, I can support you with acupuncture and integrative counseling to give you a great start to the new year and to the new decade. You can reach me on oceansandrivers.com. Also on Oceans and Rivers on Instagram and Facebook. And any, any words we should leave folks with? One thing to think about with Capricorn, that, you know, we played this game. I don't know if you played it, but we, most people played this game at the end of 2019, where they started from the beginning of the decade and then looked at themselves at the end of the decade. Mm -hmm. So one thing I think that might be good to do is like, how do you envision yourself looking at the end of the 20s? You know? And also, would you say now is a good time to start thinking about your action plan, like yeah. on, a, on a practical level? Absolutely. So it's a wrap and we are good to go. And we will see everybody in a couple of weeks when we move into 
Aquarius. Aquar Aquarius. That's right on time. Oh, that was great. <laughs> Do that again. Aquarius. Yeah, we move into that. And we're going to be looking at, you know, right on time, the Kairos of it all. How do I take a stand um, personally? How do I take a stand politically? How do I access the inner rebel that is going to go against the grain of everything that's happening? And that's going to bring us into the wood element, out of the water element, and hopefully into some social change on behalf of humanity. So see you soon.